All right, in this video, we're going to continue talking about the unit circle, so 5.2 in your text. But we're going to talk about now our other points. And what do I mean by other points? Well, in the previous video, I focused on these 16 kind of special, in some sense, points that will be really important. And therefore, we want to memorize the angle measures, both in degrees and radians, that get us to those points, and then also their x and y coordinates. But the unit circle is really the thing in red, not just all the little points in green and blue. And there's lots more points on the unit circle than just those that are depicted. For example, there's some point, I don't know, roughly speaking over here, that instead of its y-coordinate being equal to one-half, its y-coordinate is equal to two-fifths. And you might be like, wait, there's more to memorize? What's the x-coordinate of this point? What is the angle measure in degrees that gets me to this point? What is the angle measure in radians that gets me to this point? Okay, don't worry, you don't need to know all that. My point is just there's a lot more points than just the green and the blue that go around the outside of this unit circle. For example, one such point might have a y-coordinate of two-fifths. And what we don't have to have memorized, the x and y coordinates and the angles of the other points on the unit circle, I want to acknowledge that they exist, and I want to show you the types of questions that you can ask about them. So for example, what if you were asked to find the x coordinate of the point in the first quadrant of the unit circle that has a y coordinate of 2 fifths? So just to kind of orient you, this point that we're talking about, its y coordinate is 2 fifths. So if this is 1, this is 1 half, 2 fifths is a little bit below there. So I don't know, maybe we're talking about something over here. We can call this point P. And given that its y-coordinate is 2 fifths, we're trying to figure out what is its x-coordinate. In other words, solve for x in this picture. Well, in order to do that, you have to think back to something you may have learned in Math 111 at our school, where you came up with the equation of a circle. The general formula for the equation of a circle that's centered at some point kh and has radius r is this. And you're either like, oh yeah, I kind of remember seeing that at some point, but I don't really remember it. Or you're like, I never learned that at all. Okay, the good news is there's a lot of letters floating around here, but this is not that bad. We don't care about the general formula for any circle. The circle we're studying is the unit circle. And the unit circle, in some sense, is the nicest circle because it's not centered at some weird point kh. It's centered at the origin. So the value of k and the value of h in this formula will just be equal to zero. And we don't have to leave its radius as a variable r because the radius of the unit circle is just one. So I can copy this formula but change the k's and the h's into zeros and the r's into ones, and things will get significantly nicer because x minus zero squared is just x squared, and y minus zero squared is just y squared, and one squared is just the number one. What I'm saying is the only formula for a circle that you'll need in this class is this version significantly prettier than this general formula that we have up here. x squared plus y squared equals one. What is that saying? It's saying that anytime you have a point that's on the unit circle, if you take the x coordinate of that point and square it and add to that the y coordinate of that point and square it, you'll always get one as the answer. We've seen that a little bit. I don't know, this point, just to pick one at random, if I take its x coordinate one half and square it, and then I take its y coordinate, negative root three over two, and square it, let's see what happens. One half squared is one half times one half, which is one fourth. Negative root three over two squared, well, a negative times a negative is a positive, and the square root of three squared is just three, and two squared is just four. A fourth plus a third is four fourths, which just equals one. And I just picked this point arbitrarily. That'll work for any of these special points on our unit circle. And in fact, that'll work for any point on our unit circle, not just the special ones. So with this formula, I can answer very easily questions like this. I know that the y coordinate is 2 fifths, and I'm asked to figure out what the x coordinate is. Fine, x squared plus, instead of writing y, I'll write 2 fifths squared equals one. Here's an equation with only one unknown, the letter x. Solve for x and you're done. 2 fifths squared is 4 20 fifths. And so if my goal is to get x by itself, I'm gonna subtract 4 20 fifths from both sides of the equation. Thinking about this like it's 25 20 fifths, I get 25 20 fifths minus 4 20 fifths is 21 20 fifths. And now I take the square root of both sides of the equation and I get x equals, remember when you take the square root, you gotta put in a plus or minus, the square root of 21 over 25, which I can rewrite as the square root of the top here, the square root of 21 divided by the square root of 25. The square root of 25 is just equal to five. So my answer is uh, plus or minus square root of 21 over five. That's weird, why am I getting two answers? Well, remember, all that was specified up here is that the y coordinate is two fifths. I put the point over here p because it told me in the problem that the point that I'm looking for is in the first quadrant, but there's another point on the unit circle that has a y coordinate of two fifths, right over here. I never told my formula what quadrant I was in, so when I just went through and solved for x, my formula told me, oh, there's two different answers, positive square root of 21 over five and negative square root of 21 over five. This x coordinate here is the negative of the square root of 21 over five, and this x coordinate here 
the answer that I'm looking for is the positive of the square root of 21 over 5. That's why it was important to know that we we're in the first quadrant to begin with, because otherwise it's an ambiguous question. I can't just say find the x-coordinate of the point on the unit circle that has a y-coordinate of two fifths, because there's two of them, one over here and one over here. Specifying the first quadrant makes this my answer. Here's another example that you can use to kind of test your knowledge of these topics. Find the y-coordinate of the point in the third quadrant of the unit circle that has an x-coordinate of negative one-third. You don't need to draw the picture, but here's my picture. The x-coordinate is how far left and right I am. Negative one-third means I'm to the left. If this is one, a third is, roughly speaking, right here. And what I'm supposed to figure out is the y-coordinate, the height of the point that has this x-coordinate. Well, there's two of them. There's one up here that has this as its x-coordinate, and there's also one down here that has this as its x-coordinate, but it specifies the third quadrant. So here's quadrant one, quadrant two, three, and four written in Roman numerals, because that's what everyone does for some reason. And all I'm trying to figure out is what y is in my picture. What is the y-coordinate of this point? Well, same formula. Because this point is on the unit circle, its x-coordinate squared plus its y-coordinate squared has to be equal to one. So if I change the x-coordinate into the given value, I have negative one-third squared plus y squared equals one. Negative one-third squared is positive one-ninth because a negative times a negative is a positive. And if I subtract one-ninth from both sides of the equation, I get y squared equals eight-ninths because you can think about this one as nine-ninths. Taking the square root of both sides of the equation, I get y equals plus or minus the square root of 8 ninths. But again, I don't want two answers. Because I'm in the third quadrant, I know that both my x-coordinate and my y-coordinate should be negative. So it's the negative solution that I'm taking this time. I could say my answer is y equals the negative of the square root of 8 ninths. And this is a perfectly acceptable answer. However, people don't leave it this way. What they typically do is say, well, this is the square root of 8 over the square root of 9 and the square root of nine is just three, and the square root of eight, you can think about that as the square root of two times the square root of four, because two times four gives me the eight, and the square root of four is just two. What I'm saying is the square root of eight is the same as two times the square root of two. Think square root of four times the square root of two. At any rate, most people consider this the simplified version of this answer, but they're both equivalent, and either one signifies the y-coordinate of this point, which is the answer that we are looking for.